Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on our first Loved and Sent uh, webinar in the Loved and Sent community. Um, we are very excited to get this program going and be talking with Pastor Jeff and with other Loved and Sent pastors. Um, so let me just start with introductions. My name is Jane Robinson, and I will be uh, monitoring the chat today. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them in the chat. We'll make sure we have time to um, address them. And our guest today is Pastor Jeff Clater, lead pastor of a multi-site church here in St. Louis. Um, early in his ministry, he started a worshiping community in his home. And the questions and answers that uh, are questions and conversations that he was having with this group led him to write the book Loved and Sent. And we at CTA are really excited to be partnering with him on bringing that book to a wider audience. Um, and today's conversation starts something new for us. I am looking forward to our conversation. Thank you for being here, Pastor Jeff. Thank you. Also joining us this morning is Jane Schmatzer. Jane is our Adult Ministries Director, and she oversees partnerships and projects and new resources that are intended to better serve you in your ministry. Jane is going to talk with Pastor Jeff today, and as I said, I'll be watching the chat. Um, so I'm going to shut off my camera now and hand the microphone over to Jane. Please send any questions or comments through the chat as we're talking. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Uh, appreciate uh, all your help and support back there uh, behind the scenes. Um, and today, as she said, we're just so excited to kick off our um, community with a conversation with Pastor Jeff Clater. Uh, we are um, have been on a journey with, with you, Pastor Jeff, for a little over a year, uh, talking about the book Loved and Sent, talking about um, where we might be able to come alongside you and uh, just widen that audience. And so a lot of things have happened since those very, very first conversations. But what I would love to do today is really just go all the way back to the beginning and kind of hear in your own words um, what the vision was for Loved and Sent, what, what the vision was that God gave you that eventually became the book Loved and Sent. Let's, let's put it that way. Yeah, maybe by way of introduction, Jane, if I could just back up and say sure. thank you to this partnership with CTA, uh, because I think there may be in a previous generation in the publishing world, somebody wrote a book in an ivory tower and was pushed out through kind of the the organization or a institution or a business. Um, what I love about this partnership is CTA is looking for something that bubbled up locally. And um, so in answer to your question, Loved and Sent came out of pain and struggle. It's really where it came from, but sometimes those are the, the best places. And Absolutely. so I just say that as a way to say thanks to CTA, because I think in working with you and, and hopefully there are others in the future that you're partnering with people that are living it, that are living uh, the gospel and living ministry on a day to day basis in the trenches. And if you find something that that clicks, then then to lift it up uh, rather than starting from the top down, this is really a bottom up approach. So thank you for the opportunity. So your question was, um, where did Love and Scent come from? And it did come from pain and struggle. So as a, as a newer pastor, a number of years ago, I just was struggling with uh, people that I was reaching, seeing really kind of uh, maybe the earlier days of a post-Christian era. Mm -hmm. I think now, if, if there are leaders or pastors listening, I think we all know we're in a different kind of uh, culture and space now. And we just kind of assume that we're in more of a post-Christian era now. But early on, I was just struggling with that coming out of seminary where you're trained to operate more in a Christendom era. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden I had to convey the gospel, the word of God in a way that that people would understand. And not only that, but answer questions that they were asking. So um, I list in the in the book uh, the name Ava. I'll just use Ava as sort of a, a, a real person to think of in your mind. But Ava was not asking what's the difference between Catholics and Lutherans? She doesn't care. What's the difference between Methodists and Presbyterians? She's not asking that question. Those are kind of Christendom questions that we're using to distinguish ourselves within the, the larger church. She was asking, like, who am I? What's my place in the world? Do I have any value or any worth? 
And so early in my ministry, I was seeing that, that this lens of identity and purpose, who am I and why am I? And really framing the, the gospel and the whole biblical narrative with that lens of identity and purpose. That's really what the, the genesis of Loved and Sent. Um, we were in kind of a new ministry setting, starting a new church, primarily with young adults, college students, grad students, young professionals. Mm -hmm. And they were asking those questions, who am I, why am I? And so I just had to frame the conversation differently. Loved and sent bubbled up as two words that answer uh, from our Christ-centered standpoint, that answer the questions of identity and purpose. So we are loved by God and Jesus. It's the gospel. Um, and then we are sent by him, uh, the mission and vocation that we have to, to go into the world with that. And so um, that's really where it came from. Um, I was sitting with a, a friend of mine, John, at a coffee shop, and we were lamenting how miserable it was to try to reach these flaky, non-committal young adults <laughs> who didn't respond to kind of the, the way we're talking about faith or the church. And as we were talking about that over coffee, that's where those two words bubbled up in response to identity and purpose. So we're like, well, we do know that the people who are coming feel loved. They feel a sense of God's presence. And we do know that we're sending people. So we were in a very transitory setting where we're sending people, uh, students or young professionals were moving all the time. It was a short kind of incubation period. And so we grieved that, but pretty soon we said, well, maybe losing is actually a gain. Maybe mm -hmm. when we send Matt to Chicago or Brad to Seattle, maybe that's a good thing. And so we started tracking where everybody was going and celebrating it at worship. When they were leaving, we would send them with prayer and blessing. That's and so, so yeah. kind of those were, were kind of initial genesis of those two words, loved and sent. Amazing. Yeah. I think um, the... Um, reframing, I think is the word that you use kind of like, okay, so what I learned and what I expected wasn't what I got. And um, wow, has that ever uh, continued to be true? <laughs> but I, I absolutely love the fact that the book that you wrote is, um, it is the heart of the gospel and it helps you walk into every situation that you didn't expect, but you got anyway, um, with true confidence, because you know that you don't walk into it alone, um, that you walk with Jesus and that he loves you. Um, I think you use the phrase in the book more than you could possibly imagine. And I, I just remembered that because it just sunk into my heart. Like I'm loved more than I could possibly imagine. Wow. That's amazing. Um, so the thing about the book and, uh, Jane had shown us the book cover just a few minutes ago is that it, um, it shows life in different contexts. So on the cover itself, it's loved and sent. It's, um, who you answering the questions of who you are and why you matter, but also the visual cues there are, um, in, in a rural setting, in an, a suburban setting and an urban setting. And I love that because everything that you wrote in there, every um, truth that you share with us is equally applicable across all of them. And sometimes I think the natural inclination is to say, oh, well, that would work really well for them because they're in the inner city, or that would work really well for them because the suburbs, they have you know, different um, access to services than we do. But um, the fact that you show all three uh, areas of, of doing ministry, I think it's important because it's so true that everything about this loved and sent journey applies across uh, all three areas of ministry. Um, I know you've lived all three areas of ministry. So would you want to just expand on that a little bit? Sure. Yeah. And I want to speak directly to anybody who might be listening. So I imagine there could be a, uh, if you're a pastor, if you're a ministry leader, if you're a staff or volunteer, I don't know who you are, but you're, you're probably watching this because you are invested in local ministry. And so I just want to, the, my disclaimer first and foremost is that I'm, I'm just a pastor. Um, I don't try to be much more than that, but I, I love being a pastor. And so um, 
I think that's where the, again, as I mentioned earlier, the best stuff is born out of living in the trenches. And so I know that somebody listening right now, you're in the trenches and you get it. So whether that is rural, urban or suburban. So a disclosure, I, my ministry context right now is, is uh, I describe it as suburban and urban. Um, I grew up in a, in a rural context in a very small church. And so I have that kind of personal experience growing up. But I, obviously, we all agree that the gospel is transcendent, uh, not just of uh, geography, but culture, language, ethnicity. And so, yeah, it should absolutely be um, cross all boundaries that we could ever imagine. Um, and I think that the, the lens of identity and purpose is transcendent. I mean, if you read psychology, psychologists identify that these are fundamental human needs next to you know, food and water and shelter and safety. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody needs to have a sense of identity and a sense of purpose. And I think when we see a lot of struggle in our current culture, I just read an article about males or, or men in America. Uh, fewer of them are employed, fewer of, the, fewer of them are getting college degrees now. Um, there are men in our country who are struggling with a sense of uh, kind of a, a post-industrial, now a, a very um, technological, world, uh, where do I fit? Uh, what is my purpose? So just as that, as an example um, of people struggling with that, suicide rates among men are, are high. And so that's transcendent. That doesn't matter where you live. I think, I think everybody is dealing with identity and purpose. And so we have to find ways in our local context to, to bring the word of God to bear upon that, uh, that struggle and that, that quest for identity and purpose. And so yeah, again, that just gets to kind of the heart of where Loved and Sent came from. That's great. Um, so at this point, you're now about seven years into the Loved and Sent journey with your congregation. And I'm just wondering if you could just take a minute and reflect back on um, from before you started to now, what are some of the most positive things that you've seen in the way of change in your congregation and, and understanding that there are two campuses there? So um, just across all both both campuses, what's the change that you've seen that you really point to as being incredibly positive as a result of beginning yeah. this journey? Well, let me extend that. I think seven years is probably more like 10 and really even 12 to 14 years of loved and sent and 10 more formally. And I say that to, to just make the point that uh, ministry bears fruit over a long time, a long period of time. And so again, if somebody's listening, like don't be discouraged about if things don't take right away, uh, mm -hmm. you're in a place among a people for, for a long time, you're gonna live with them. And, that, and it takes a long time to build culture. So that gets to your question, Jane, of of um, kind of what, what have I seen? My goal or, or what I pray for is that a sense of loved and sent is a culture and not a slogan, mm -hmm. a bumper sticker, a program, a program or a product that at the end of the day, and we've talked about, I've talked uh, to CTA about this is that yes. we don't want to sell a product. We want to share um, a culture and a sense of being. That's what loved and sent. It's a it's a way of being, just as it is to be a disciple of Jesus. It's not, it's not a product or a program or a twelve step. It's a, a way of living and of being, of existing, and that just takes time of kind of ruminating or living in a community over the course of a long period of time. So what I've seen over that time, and uh, so maybe this is not a good sales pitch, but if you buy the book, things aren't going to happen like that okay if you buy the product it's not going to be the magic bullet but i think anybody listening here who's worked in ministry for any period of time you get it uh, there has never been a book outside of the bible itself that has actually you know done immediate transformation but there are resources that if invested in over time can assist and help and so that's i just hope loved and sent is that that it's a that it's a help along the way so over time i'll give you an example a, a few weeks ago a guy named Bob comes in uh, to talk with me. Bob is in his 80s. His wife died a year ago. And he says, I want to raise up pastors for the future of the church. And I want to give $100,000 to start an endowment 
to give scholarships in perpetuity to anybody from our church that wants to study for ministry. And I was humbled by that. So he gave me a, a piece of paper that he kind of had his thoughts on it. And he started it with, as we talk about in our church, that we are loved by God in Jesus and sent by him into the world. So I want to leave this as my legacy to raise up pastors who will do this. So this is unsolicited. I did not ask him to do this. It, it's part of his being and it's a natural part of his language uh, is reflecting a deeper sense of his heart. So loved and sent are kind of the tip of the iceberg. It's kind of the label, the language that we talk about, mm -hmm. the gospel and mission. But under that is, you know, 90% is really a whole heart of a disciple in Christ. Uh, another example would be when I, the best example of loved and sent is when I have no idea that stuff is happening, when it's not driven by the pastor or a program. In fact, sometimes I work really hard on stuff and it doesn't work out the way I wanted. And then I find out later that people are already doing something and I had nothing to do with it. So a, a couple adopted an Afghan family that came um, in the Afghan refugee crisis a couple of years ago. Um, a couple just got connected to a ministry in our city that, that receives immigrants and refugees. And they just volunteered their time and adopted an Afghan family for a year. They kind of uh, would resource them, help them get rides, find a doctor, a dentist, and so on and so forth. I only found out about that later, but they were living out loved and sent in a very tangible way without any instigation from me. It was simply part of who they were, their being and their culture. So does that make sense? That, that's, to me, that's, yes. the, that's a home run. That's a grand slam. Yeah, I, it absolutely makes sense. And I think that What's important about those um, examples is that nobody is loved and sent in exactly the same way. Like God built each of us uniquely, differently, and um, through our experiences, we experience him differently, and we uh, um, pour out that experience to others differently. So some are in the season of their life where they feel like the best way they can pour out into the future is through a legacy, like your first example, which I love. I love that he's so deeply convicted and has seen so much good happen from it that he's convinced that that's the best way to um, leave this earth. Um, gosh, I mean, that almost made me tear up. I was like, oh my goodness, that's a new story. Obviously, I hadn't heard that. Um, I think that uh, in every, um, I can't imagine there's a, a, a state or a city that doesn't have the, the opportunity to um, see uh, immigration at, at some level. Um, and so the Afghan refugee family is a wonderful example of, of uh, yeah, there are first stops that they make but that can't be everything. And so if that's where God is leading you, that's that's a wonderful place to go. I know as you and I talked over the past year to a year and a half, you've given me many examples of how people have um, lived out their um, the love that Jesus has poured into them in ways that were uh, deeply connected to their heart. And none of them are the same, but they all make an impact in the local community. And I, that for me, that was one of the most exciting um, things about becoming connected with you. And the uh, first time that we sat down together, I remember I used the word program. And you, you were like, can we just stop right there for a second? This is not a program. It, it isn't something that we do and then move on from this is who we are. And it was a game changer for me, just taking what I had always seen modeled in the church and kind of turning it on its head. It's like, no, this is it. We're not doing loved and sent this year and then something else next year. We're not doing loved and sent for six weeks and then something else for six weeks. This is a journey of who we're going to become. And I think that when you said that nothing happens overnight, um, that's most certainly true, but I have had the um, 
privilege of meeting with some of the people in your uh, in your congregation, uh, some that have stepped forward and have embraced uh, service uh, on an amazing level uh, and have uh, stood in the gap there of, of, of organizing um, servant events it, throughout the city and just listening to their heart and how excited they are. I know that there's a great spirit that is moving through your church and um, it'll just continue to grow. And I, I can't say enough about what I think Loved and Sent has the opportunity to do in other congregations as well. So thank you for sharing those those few examples. And uh, and again, you know, from CTA's perspective, thank you for joining us on this journey. Um, so let's let's also talk about some of the things that were a surprise to you. Um, so you said that one of the surprises is that things happen and you don't know about it. Anything else that's a surprise as you've been on this this journey? You know, I, I mentioned before, I'm just a pastor and I really loved and sent bubbled out of a local context. I wrote the book really then to kind of summarize kind of who we are and put it in a way that's translatable and repeatable uh, for our people. What was a surprise to me is that others would find it useful. So I'm in a city where we have a seminary uh, that we get field workers from or interns from. And so they started to kind of take it with them um, or other relationships that I have pastors and other things across the country. So to me, it's a great blessing to, to share this and do it together. I see it kind of as um, crowdsourcing a little bit. So I, I don't see mm -hmm. loved and sent as my thing. Uh, or our thing as a one church, but uh, something that's bigger, that's really kind of invited me into a larger movement that I think God is up to of people. And maybe some of you who are listening right now, you're already doing this in your context. Um, you don't need me to, you know, tell you how to do it, but I'm just hopeful that there's a sense in which we can do this together. And so uh, Loved and Sent is maybe a little, little bit of a banner that kind of unites us. So even right now, having a um, a webinar, we talked about this, Jane, that, again, it's not just a product. Is there a way that we can connect those of us who are using these resources together? Because I think that's where the greatest impact can be, is that we encourage each other, share with each other, and continue to learn together. So formation always happens best in community and in relationship. So if that happens in a local congregation, can it happen at this level, too, with leaders and, and fellow pastors and church leaders? So that's been a kind of a surprise to me and a blessing to me that I've gained friendships and uh, really deep friendships and connections and encouragement uh, through loved and sent that's beyond my local context. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, one of those relationships or um, contacts um, was a, a pastor that reached out to you after we had launched Loved and Sent and asked and said, hey, I heard about this and I really think that this could be good for my community and um, just wondering, I know there's a book, but did you do sermons? Was Is there any other material that's been created that would help my church process through it since you've already, you know, been doing this? And everything that he listed that he would love to know about is actually um, in our uh um, and, and leaders kit um, for loved and sent and you sent him to us obviously because it's already there and ready for him ready to go for him but as I read the email um, I just had to smile big because I think what you said what God is up to is always uh, bigger than we could possibly know every single piece that he asked for is is in the discipleship package but there's also more than he asked for too and so hopefully we've been able to utilize um, the experience of Christ Memorial and um, uh, just magnify that out so that other churches uh, will have everything that they need. Um, as you can see, this is all the parts and pieces um, that we put together uh, to help uh, a ministry launch Loved and Sent. There's um, a unpacking your kit. So it kind of gives a vision for how to use everything that's there. There are um, 
sermon uh, outlines, there are conversation guides for adults and for youth, there are uh, children's messages for children, there's a reading guide for how to process through uh, the book Loved and Sent, and um, there's a, a guide for how to do a local servant event in your uh, own context. And also um, at the end of that day of service, just a, an outline for how to come together and really take a pause and celebrate what you what God has done through that that time of coming together. You said you're best in community. I think that you've modeled that all the way through. Um, and I think it's something that other churches can absolutely do and really harness that that power. Um, and hopefully um, these pieces that have been created um, for this one resource will uh, allow them to do that. There are also social media messages. There's a welcome message from you. Um, and then there's art for anything else that they might want to uh, create for themselves, all included in, in that package. And uh, we just certainly hope that that's going to be a blessing for ministry leaders. Um, but I think for everybody who's listening, what you should know is that um, all of this was created based on um, years of experience and unfolding it. And um, whether it was personally uh, Pastor Jeff's experience or some of the people in his congregation or some others that had taken the material and tried to make it you know, in, into something specific for their context. Um, we've taken all that wisdom and put it together. Uh, I think you said at the beginning, Pastor Jeff, you love the fact that it was bubbled up and not top down. And um, that is most certainly true of this entire package. Um, one of the things that you talk about in your book is the ability to give a clear and concise message, if uh, answer, if somebody asks you, what do you believe and why do you believe it? And actually, I think it's clear, concise, compelling, and consistent four C's <laughs> of, of giving an answer. Um, and I know that that's really important to you. And so you came up with a way to express it. We took all of that information and put it um, on, on this bookmark that people can read. But I wonder if you would just take a few minutes to talk about presence, pardon, and power, how all of that comes together to help people um, articulate their faith. I think every Christian needs to have an answer if somebody says, you know, who are you? Or especially more pointed, like, who is Jesus? Why, are you, why do you go to church? Why are you a Christian? And uh, where do you even begin if somebody asks you? And I've always thought you almost have to have like a 60 second elevator pitch because mm -hmm. sometimes in a conversation, it's it's natural, it's uh, it's back and forth and you don't have 30 minutes to do a full presentation. So what do you even say? So talking about manger cross crown, I didn't make that up, Jesus did. But manger cross crown is like a simple way to talk about the person and work of Jesus. Um, his identity, really, his identity and purpose is is uh, key to our own identity and purpose. So let's start with Jesus. And uh, manger cross crown are just these simple icons that reflect the person and work of Jesus, his incarnation, death, and resurrection. We kind of add these P words to it to express what God is doing in that. So the manger is the presence of God, the incarnation. The cross is the power, or sorry, the pardon of God, the forgiveness, the atonement of Christ. And then the um, the crown is the resurrection power of God. Um, he is now the risen king. And so it's a simple way. I mean, we all <clears throat> get that, but it gives you a handle in that 60 seconds that you might have in a conversation to be clear, concise, consistent, and compelling. And so we um, use these things called bookmarks and then CTA kind of prettied, it, prettied them up a little bit and packaged <laughs> them so that um, on the one hand, you have a summary of the presence, pardon, power, manger, cross crown. The other side, the sent side, is really just some blank lines that we would be intentional about people that we are sent to because we believe that every Christian is sent to at least one person. There's somebody in your world that God is using you, he's deploying you to bring the love of God in Christ to them, the manger, cross, and crown. So even literally the kinetic act of writing a name down on that line 
um, gives us some impetus and gives us some accountability to say, I'm going to pray for this person. I'm going to be mindful and watching for ways in which to love them and then to share the love of Christ with them. And so it's a tool that we've used in our church before and we found it helpful. And it's just, it's iPhone easy. It's just simple. But those simplest things can sometimes be the most profound. And so we found it to be a useful and simple tool. And in our church, like our kids, we have a <clears throat> child care center from two years old to our 90 years old. They know manger cross crown. They know like the actions, like the manger, the cross and the crown. So like mm -hmm. we literally can uh, do it. And there's no question about what that means. Everybody kind of has this shared language with each other and then an easy language to share it with those who are um, outside. Beautiful. Um, easy. It's um, because you you um, develop the symbols, not just the words. I think uh, people, um, no matter how you remember things best, all have a handle uh, that they can um, put into their brain and say, okay, I'm just I don't have to worry. That's three things. I can remember that. Um, yeah. However they do it best. But um, yeah, and the and just starting, I think, with the, the manger, obviously, it's the it's the beginning of Christ uh, coming to earth. Um, but also just the idea that um, you, you have a savior who loves you so much, he wanted to physically be with you. That's that's a pretty powerful place to start, especially in today's world where people feel isolated and alone and um, like they're trying to muddle through. I think um, a lot of times you mentioned um, suicide statistics are going up and yeah, they are across the board and especially among younger people. And it's like, well, that's a perfect place to start. There's somebody who cared enough to leave paradise to be physically present with you. So um, yeah, I love I love the symbols. I, and when we were thinking about how we could do what you do, but um, um, maybe broaden the context a bit, it was, it was probably the most fun I had working on it was taking symbols and, and words and ideas and putting them together in a way that as I looked at it, I'm like, okay, it makes sense to me. If it can make sense to me, it probably can make sense to 90% of the country for yeah. sure. Yeah, Jane, um, the one thing that's interesting about even the words loved and sent, I call them bridge words. They're certainly mm -hmm. in the Bible. We can find it all over the Bible, uh, but they're also words that are found in culture and somebody without any biblical understanding, different than like a word like justification or sanctification might be a little bit more, um, require more explanation, and we should, sure. but uh, these are entry words, loved and sent, or even presence, pardon to some degree, or power. Those are words that people get in culture. So people talk about love all the time, or I sent you a text message. So there's at least an initial, in communicating the gospel, there's an initial shared language that that is outsider friendly as well. Yeah. And so, so important to have the, like those bridge words that it doesn't feel like I asked you a question and you answered me in a foreign language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's harder to build relationship um, and connection for sure <laughs> if you don't have at least that in common. <laughs> um, so uh, we looked at uh, some of the pieces and, and resources that have been developed to help uh, help uh, congregations uh, and ministry leaders uh, engage love and scent in, in their context. Um, we've talked about the fact that it is a journey. Um, it's not something that you'll start and in a month uh, you'll be finished with and all of a sudden magically different things will be happening, um, but it is a start. And uh, I think that one of the things that uh, is always helpful on a journey is to know that um, as you begin, there are people going before you and kind of uh, uh, clearing another path for your next steps. And so um, 
I'd just like to talk a little bit about what we have on tap for the future. So if you're starting your Love and Scent journey today or, or soon, um, one of the things that uh, I think is a natural consequence that comes out of people being in relationship with others, praying for them, looking for those opportunities, as you said, to share Jesus with them, is that they want to get connected to the same thing that you have. So um uh, seeing people uh, show up at church, maybe that have never considered that to be uh, something that was needed for them. Uh, and the natural consequence of that then would be that you would want to share more deeply with them as they uh, choose to join uh, your congregation. So we have uh, resources in development now for um, integrating uh, new members. Um, and helping them kind of uh, join a moving, uh, joining a movement, basically, which can be a little bit challenging, I would think. You want to speak to that just a little bit, Pastor Jeff, and kind of the um, experience that you've had of new people that have come into contact with those um, in your congregation and then been drawn uh, into the congregation to join uh, and become a member there? Uh, what's it like to integrate somebody into something that's already moving and help them seamlessly uh, jump on board? Yeah, it's the invitation to Christ is always an invitation also into a community. And so, you know, as we are sent, there are people that are going to literally join your church. And, the, and those listening, you've, you've seen that happen. Um, sometimes it's you just are throwing seed and you have no idea where it'll sprout, but sometimes it sprouts right in front of you and in your church. And so, yeah, there's always then how do you incorporate a new person into your culture, uh, especially maybe somebody from uh, an unchurched background or even a non-Christian background? How do they start to to come in? And that's where Loved and Sent has been helpful for us. Again, accessible language that we can start at least at a at a certain point and then work deeper. We kind of use the image of an auger. An auger keeps turning kind of in the same direction. It's almost repetitive, but it keeps turning deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. And so loved and sent for us has been like that. We, we're, we're not giving up on these words. We're in it for the long haul, but we keep finding a depth to the gospel, certainly, and a depth to the mission that God has given us. And so uh, we keep turning the auger. Um, in terms of new people coming into our church, we do have a uh, as most churches do, a kind of a new member process. We call it Pathway. And uh, I know we're kind of working on developing a couple of things that didn't make the first round of resources for Loved and Sent, this, this uh, leader kit, but um, we're working on a couple of pieces, a children's activity book and um, kind of a new member process that might also be useful to you and a company be kind of a complement to uh, integrating somebody into a, a culture and a community that is already living uh, loved and sent. So we're we're working on that right now. Yep. And we're talking about several other things too. So um, be sure to stay tuned. We um, will be having uh, conversations here in this community every month. Um, we'll have a different topic and quarterly. Pastor Jeff has agreed to join us. So um, we get to hear uh, Wisdom from him, certainly, but also a chance to ask questions and to learn um, from all of the experience that he and some of his fellow pastors have had uh, as they have journeyed um, uh, into this change in their culture uh, based on um, just those two very, very small but powerful words of loved and sent. Um, and so we just are excited uh, that you were able to join us on our uh, first conversation, and we invite you back uh, next month in August. It will be the fourth uh, Wednesday at 10 a.m., so we're going to try to meet every month on the the fourth Wednesday. So stay tuned. We'll be put, publishing some information about that. We would love to have you back, and we're so grateful that you could join us today. Thank you, Pastor Jeff, for your time and for your wisdom and for being uh, so generous with both. Thanks, Jane. I want to give a shout out to a couple of people who are on right now. Um, Dr. Ben Haupt, Associate Provost at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis and a professor there and Pastor Nathan Schultz, a colleague of mine. I'm hopeful that, I don't know, guys, I'm putting you on the spot that I know we've talked maybe a little bit about it, but maybe you'll be on a future webinar because uh, they've been a part of community for me 
and then input for me. So just to show Loved Inside is really a communal thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just one person or one church and these guys have been important. So now I'm kind of like putting you guys on the spot. So maybe you have to, you have to join <laughs> in later. <laughs> oh, Ben, I'm sorry, we can't hear you. We are, um, we're blessed to have you both with us. And um, yes, we would love to have you join and give a deeper insight into love and sent from your perspective. Um, and uh, Ben, can we hear you now? Do you think that's fixed? Any better? There we go. Yes, there we, go. Hey, we can hear you. Right. Yeah, I was just saying that Jeff didn't even pay us to come on or anything. We just, um, well, I'll speak <laughs> for myself, but. Um, Loved and sent has been helpful for me just thinking about my own um, walk with Jesus, my own um, living out my faith uh, as I uh, as am a husband and, and father and um, in my own my own daily uh, vocation and career. So, um, yeah, fantastic stuff. Really glad that this is uh, that this is happening. Thank you. Thank ben. you. Uh, as Jane said, we will be meeting again next month. The fourth Wednesday is August 23rd. We'll meet at 10 a.m. So please be sure to join us. Um, if you've joined the Loved and Sent Leaders community, you can just RSVP to the event when it shows up in your feed. And I also made a note to let you know that uh, you saw on the screen our discipleship package with all those resources is $129. Um, and it, I want you to know that we do have a program called The Advantage at CTA. It's a yearly subscription for $99. And what we aim to do with that package is just really resource you in your ministry. And so once you join The Advantage, all of our digital resources are free to you. So that $129.99 package is free to our Advantage members. Um, so I just wanted to make sure everybody knew about that. In addition, on the Loved and Sent book, we do have a quantity price, knowing that you'll be buying for groups or for your congregation. Um, so be sure to um, notice that when you go to order it. I thank you all for joining us today and look forward to our conversation again next month. Jane and Pastor Jeff, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.